Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks losing streak is now up to six games after that debacle last night, 5-1 loss to the Buffalo Sabres in the Canucks home opener. Everyone is asking, how do we fix this team? Let's get into it in this week's Ask Me Anything. I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, October the 23rd. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive timely and trustworthy. A quick 45 second update on where I've been. We had our massive conference for work this week. So that's why I've been occupied Friday, Saturday, today. Uh, also a follow up to the conference. We're doing a big concert with, uh, with a big Christian artist coming in. So I will not be live streaming tonight. And tomorrow night I'm at the game. So Canuck, uh, Parker and I are moving Canucks After Dark to Tuesday. So we'll go from there. So likely for me, no live stream tonight. And we'll see what happens tomorrow night. Maybe the Canucks win, I'll rush home and do a stream in celebration because we're waiting for a Canucks win. Thank you to everyone who got in some questions, many of them of the similar theme, and we'll get into it right now. Hall of Fame member C edits. What did you make of the Ruth what Rutherford had to say on after hours, after last night's game, especially his comments about how the team may very well be headed in the direction of a rebuild? Yeah, fascinating stuff there, C edits, because this is something that Lyndon wanted to do back in the mid 2015, 2016, when he, he basically got dumped and equity and betting went against him. Then this season was supposed to be the season where a lot of people uh, building on last year, but a lot of people didn't buy into it. And Tier Rutherford even consider a rebuild now. I, I do know he then went on to say, but he would prefer to re retool on the fly or change things on the fly. But that's a very hard thing to do in the NHL. You usually have to go all in on a rebuild or go all in on winning. And the Canucks seem to have gone all in on the winning. But if that's not going to happen, maybe they do have to go in all in on a rebuild. Is this market patient enough for that? That's, put that in the comment section. You know, we always react to anything I say. But is this market patient enough for a rebuild? Or are you saying, no way, Clay. We cannot waste the prime years of guys like Demko, Petey, and Hughes. Those are the three that I think about. Then, you know, Horvat, Miller, Besser, by extension, Pat Colson may be entering into that. But really, you don't want to waste the, the prime years of Demko, PD, and Hughes. So I don't think that fans will stomach a rebuild, but I certainly don't think they're stomaching what's happening right now. So I think it's a catch-22. And I think Rutherford, Alvin, and everyone's in a tough position. I'm not feeling sorry for them. I'm just stating the facts. I think it's a tough position to be in right now. Hall of Famer Adam Broomfield, if things don't change soon, how long until Bruce gets his walking papers? I think there'll be a trade of some sort before there's a coaching shakeup. I, I simply think if you fire Bruce and then hire someone else, now you're paying three coaches. I think Travis Green got maybe one or two more years left on his contract. Then you're paying Boudreaux for the rest of this year. Not sure if Aquilino want to play, uh, pay three coaches. I think there's a reason why they didn't sign Boudreaux to an extension over the summer. My gut feeling, unless it goes completely south, 0-10 or 0-12, or maybe if they're 8-15-2 again on December 5th, Maybe then you fire him, but I think uh, a trade will happen first before Bruce Boudreaux gets fired. Derek says a similar question. Hey, Clay, can the Canucks get themselves out of this hole they're in in the playoffs? I know it's early, but just look at the start of the season last year. If this continues, does Boudreaux get fired? I hope not because I like him as a coach. So, yeah, I should have probably read that as I read Adam's question. I do not think Bruce is going to get fired, and at least not yet. Can the Canucks get themselves out of this? Sure, they can. But just as they had a six-game losing streak, they're going to have to have a six-game win streak of sorts to get them just close to 500. They'll actually be over 500 because they have two loser points in there. So they're going to have to go on a five or six game win streak of their own and, and then almost even things out a little bit. But they can't wait too long. They can't wait too long. That's going to happen pretty soon. Peter says this, do you think even with the new management team, decisions are still being made, influenced by Aquilini since he still wants the team to be in win now mode instead of thinking long term? Peter, great question. This kind of goes with my answer to see at it's earlier about rebuilding. I do think Aquilini wants to win now. We've heard that he was behind the Miller long-term extension. Doesn't say that doesn't mean Rutherford was against it or for it. So I do think that um, I do think Aquilini still has some influence on the decisions, especially when it comes to player contracts. Dominic, <clears throat> hey Clay, do you see a trade coming soon? And if so, what player for? And then Joel Pratt says, would trading a top forward for a top defenseman make sense? Miller, Besser, Horvat, or Garland? Is it wise to make that trade that we lose in the short term, but win in the long term? And then he says, have you ever played donkey, baseball, or American ping pong? I have to look up 
this just shows that I, I do this spontaneously. I don't know what donkey baseball or American ping pong are, um, but I've played baseball like a donkey before. I have to look up, you know, I'm gonna take 30 seconds right now to look it up as I'm doing this video really quickly. Donkey, I hope nothing bad comes up on my computer here. Donkey baseball. Uh, no, I've never played a baseball with a donkey. It actually truly is baseball with a donkey. So that's definitely no, an American ping pong. Am I, American ping pong. Is American ping pong table tennis? Then if that's the case, yeah, I played all the time. We have a, we have a table in our backyard, but maybe I am missing something. Okay. More importantly about the trade. Yeah, I think, I think if Garland, you know, he got sat once, if Besser continues not to produce, uh, I don't think they're trading Miller, even though his no trade doesn't kick in the next year. Horvath's an interesting one to me because if for some reason the Rutherford LV think that now's the time to part with him, then yeah, you could get decent assets for him. And he's the one without a contract going forward. So, uh, and we thought that he was going to get signed. All the talk was that he's a priority. Maybe things have changed there. So um, originally I would have said Garland, but maybe Horvat would be the leader of those four to get traded. And yes, if it improves the team, especially on the defense, I would definitely look at doing that for sure. Now, I don't know who we would trade for. I don't know who who's in the need of a third line center or second line center in some eyes for, for Horvat or in first line center in his, his, uh, his agent's eyes. So to answer Dominic's question, I don't know who we would trade for. I definitely know we would definitely have to trade for some, uh, some defensive help, especially on the right side. And then maybe you're sending away a defenseman and maybe a player like, uh, like Horvat or Garland. I don't know that. I just have a feeling that if they do a trade, it won't be that major. They'll try and do some cosmetic changes first, but um, desperate times do call for desperate measures. So that's a really good question, but it's so hard to, to speculate on. Hockey fan 44, I'm sick and tired of this. The Canucks need to make some moves. Maybe they need to change their defense. Everyone is sitting there and blaming Demko for all of this. Yeah, he hasn't had the best start, but it certainly is not his fault. Maybe Bester should go on PD on a line. Yeah, a lot of people are advocating for this because Horvath's not the best playmaking center. Bester needs a, a playmaking center. So if you reunite the lotto line, get Miller going as well. So you can go lotto line. Then you go Horvat with anyone, with Kuzmenko, with Parkolzin, with Mikhail, with Garland, with Pearson. Um, and then your third line would be Lazar with a couple of those guys. And then someone like a Pearson, someone would have to drop to the fourth line. And you can still have Niels Oman centering that. So you could go P.D. or Miller, whoever it is, in the middle. And then Horvat, Lazar, and Oman. And then you can try and get Besser going because um, he needs a, a, a playmaking center like P.D. or even Miller as opposed to Bo Horvat. Nuts and bolts. According to the opening video, somebody with the Buffalo Sabres logo on the back of his neck will be traded. I did not know that. Do you agree with that, Clay? I have no clue what you're talking about, nuts and bolts. So I have to, someone else uh, fill me in. And the question, is this team mentally weak? You never want to say that about a professional athlete, but Bruce Brujo even said that after the third loss. Yeah, I see it. When you have Shen and Miller fighting on the ice and Carl and Garland having to skate between them, when you have them coming up for their player intros and not even smiling, not even excited to be there, not a lot of camaraderie, and they only have one goal to celebrate last night, I think this team is weak. I do think losing Kel, uh, cures that for sure, but they have to, uh, sorry, I think winning cures that for sure, um, but uh, they haven't done so just yet, and I, I can't imagine that it's weighing on them. I'm sure they have enough pressure on themselves, let alone the pressure from the fans and the media coming into this season. And finally, Lazy Husband, which electric vehicle piques your interest? Gail and I have started to talk about an electric vehicle. We are Honda people. We have an Odyssey have a, and a Civic. Always been Honda people. I know Honda isn't the best, the mo most well-known for their electric vehicles, so we might have to look elsewhere. You know, I know people that have uh, Bolts and that, I don't know how to say it, that Iona, Ionio or whatever, I-O-N-I-O. I know there's obviously a bunch of Teslas, especially living here in Richmond. So admittedly, um, nothing is piqued my interest. I don't need a Tesla. I don't want a Tesla. So um, we, we're going to start to look a little bit, maybe a Toyota, but um, not, uh, not really big into cars. And we're going to have to definitely get some help. And I'll take some advice if anyone wants to leave some advice down below on electric cars to look into. So maybe those two things. The first one was, would you have the patience for a rebuild? The second thing is, give me an electric car recommendation. Put those things in the comments below, and I would appreciate your support as always. So don't forget, no live stream tonight. Likely not a live stream tomorrow unless the Canucks win, then I'll rush home to do one. But it's a late late game last uh, tomorrow night, so we'll see. And other than that, I really appreciate your support. I'm back. Going to go back to daily videos starting 
today. So here we are. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of my answers. Shout out to my sponsors, Vancey Experts Real Estate and Perform and Transform Personal Training and Weight Loss. Thank you to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame and Franchise members. And thanks to all of you for watching and continuing to support my channel. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Leave a tip. A super thanks if you'd like to. Become a member. Upgrade if you'd like to. And definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Are you in? Uh, can you stomach a rebuild? And give me an electric car recommendation. Have a great day, you guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I wish I could say I'm going to go find my voice now, but I have to MC an event today. That's going to go great. God bless and go Canucks go.